How's it going ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkill and welcome back to Meteor World Ag Actor Badge and Dagger. It's time for us to learn all the ropes when it comes to traffic division. Seeing we're not in the 13th anymore because it doesn't exist. Let's do some traffic. <laughs> so, what are we doing here? I park us in a small space. What do you think? We lie and wait for crime. So we're looking for speeders and traffic light violators? Lame. It's one of our most important jobs. Maybe it doesn't look like much to you, but our work here adds up in the long run. So basically, we're keeping the streets safe, okay? Wow, so safe. I lean on the wheel, steering forward. No criminals yet, I mean, obviously. Is this it? Until noon, for starters. Some days we catch plenty, some days we get nothing. Like my expectations needed lowering. I'm gonna fall asleep. Not right now you aren't. You didn't have to hurt me. I totally had to hurt you. Mercy's not his strongest suit. I guess this is how it feels to get struck, stuck in traffic. Then let's chat to stay awake. Chat? Do you know who took apart the 13th? What's this now? It's weird, the way they shut us down. To make the MPA more problems than it solves. I mean, we've got you, and you're one of them, so maybe I can kind of see what you're talking about. You know what's even weirder? It happened right after I almost got killed. That's probably just a coincidence though, right? You almost get killed like all the time. That's true. It isn't like I've never had a target on my back before. There's not a lot of evidence to tie my room's demise to the 13th, but I still think it stinks. It does stink a bit, huh? Right. No, I mean in this car. Huh? Kinda sour? Did you take a bath yesterday? Where was I gonna do that? My apartment exploded. Ew, you're so gross. Kamachi can't open the window fast enough. Don't be a baby. Ew, 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 gross, you're awful. Kamachi heaves a deep sigh, emphasis on the exhale. More importantly, she doesn't seem to know what went down with the 13th. Kamachi, the rumor mill herself. I can try getting her to ask around, but if she doesn't know, then it's already certifiably suspicious. So I probably shouldn't take, make her risk her neck fin fishing for intel. I just lost my words there in that sentence all of a sudden. They just ran away. Evening comes. Hmm. She heaves a sigh and huffs out a big breath. Three offenders today. That's not so bad. It's finally over. Good work today, me. Just you? Like you did anything useful. You can't run it after traffic violators like you're gonna punch them or something. Get used to the division you're in now already. I haven't even been here a whole day. Even the rookies usually catch on by this point. We got a difference of opinion here. Your style in traffic's way too soft. You gotta put the squeeze on punks like that. That guy was speeding, and all he had were excuses. He had the damn nerve to try and blame other people for speeding too. I remember the stupid face he made when he pointed at another car zooming off in the distance. I should have punched him for real. Definitely not allowed. They usually make the same excuses. Other people were doing it too, that other guy was going faster. Take it them too, this isn't fair. Same old, same old. I step on the gas to get us back to the agency. Hey, I know it's a police cap, but don't overdo it, okay? Getting to go fast is a perk of the job. Only in an emergency. Kamachi scribbles something down in her notepad. What are you doing? Writing up today's report. Would like to catch a couple more guys, really. Another peaceful day on the beautiful 7th. Yes, but we've still got a quota. Cool, I got an idea then. What kind of idea? Everybody slows down when they see the police, right? Well, yeah. That's why we try to keep out of sight. If they see a cop car speeding, they'll relax and go faster, right? Yeah, maybe. A little bit. That's when we grab them. The second they go one mile over the speed limit, we book them and take them down to the station. You can blow way past our qu your quota like, like that. Okay, great. That's evil. She shakes her head, wishing she hadn't listened. I'd get promoted like crazy if I was in traffic. Congrats, Luki. You're in traffic now. Alright, let's get back. All we have to do is drop by the division and file today's report. And then we're good to go home. Finishing early is one perk we get, I guess. I have to admit, it's a point of appeal. By the way, um, we've been wondering if we should do a welcome party? A welcome party? Nobody's gonna show up if they don't have to, so we were wondering if we should make it mandatory. Don't ask me. It'd probably feel more like a welcoming funeral. Great guess. That's why I nixed the idea. I don't get why she told me if you already killed it. But I'll keep that to myself. The visiting day with traffic was more fun than I thought. Maybe we'll get a chance to hang out again sometime soon. Yep, have a good night, see you tomorrow. 
Tamari, you hear me? Fine. I guess this nightmare isn't ending that easy. Somehow, unbelievably, I've been doing this for a week now. I've been living like a filthy traffic officer. It's different from life in the 13th. I just do what I'm told in the time allocated. Sometimes offenders resist, but not like my usual violent offenders do. I caught the drudgery of a daily- I'm caught in the drudgery of a daily routine. This is boring. I've never been so goddamn bored before in my life. I miss the freewheeling atmosphere of the 13th. Hey, eyes forward. There's no rule that says I can't look at the sky. I fire back at Kamachi, who's craning her neck out of the police car window. I'm trying to be hard-boiled over here. Don't boil yourself too hard. Traffic's rules are stricter than the ones in the 13th. Why do you think I'm staring at the sky like this? I guess I kinda know. Claris and the others must be lonely too. Missing me. I sorta looked into that, actually. Huh? Claris is holding up pretty well. Seriously? The MPA isn't so big on elves overall. Yeah, but she's actually cute. She's a cutie and she's easy to like. And everyone knows how you treated her. Claris is a dick, though. The older guys see her like a long lost daughter. Come back, back into their arms. That 13th revival you're dreaming of might be a real bummer for her. <laughs> Are the others holding up okay, too? Uh, well, kind of. Claris started in the 13th, but the others basically left and came back to, their, to the other divisions. So I think with them it's more complicated. They're not fitting in so hot? Nobody else is complaining like you do, except Vaz. The others are trying to ride it out. This whole thing isn't helping anyone. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to get going? We've got a little more time, right? Normally we'd be out here for another half hour. You know how us cops kind of aren't that flexible. Well, so once we set up a trap like this, it's pretty obvious. You could say that. We try to hide, but people still tend to spot us before we can spot them breaking the law. The sharper drivers slam their brakes when we, they, when we enter their vision. We caught two violators today. Up until yesterday, we were getting like 10 a day, right? Definitely a poor catch. People break the rules a lot on this stretch, but that means they're watching out for us too. The word is probably out there that we've been lurking here. They had to do it. So they picked up on how we've been operating here. Anyone who drives the stretch every day has already made it a habit of playing nice for the duration. We stake the stretch out every now, every day on the month, ending on a zero. Any idiot can remember a rule like that. I'm kind of surprised we managed to catch two. But if you turn it around, I guess even if we weren't here on days ending in zero, they'd still follow the rules here, huh? They might. But not for very long. Two or three times, sure, but that'd be the end of it. Once they realised the police presence was gone, they'd be back to their regular tricks. Not that the, that offers us any solutions, it's just reality. We just gotta keep playing cat and mouse. Anyway, let's get rolling. Sounds good. A car passes by in front of us. It's black, an ordinary passenger vehicle. Kamati watches it go by and then gives me an order. Take us back to the agency, okay? Hold up. Hmm? I want to take a detour. Wait. What are you doing? Keep me in the loop here, okay? I gas the engine and give chase. There are already several vehicles between us. That's working in our favour. They make good camouflage. Wait, wait! That black car, three in front of us. The guy in the passenger seat was acting funny. What? What's that supposed to mean? The driver didn't pay much attention to us, but the guy next to him looked real uncomfortable. It smells funny. Does it? Lots of people get uncomfortable when they know what, they're, what we're doing. Sure, I've seen that plenty this past week. Let's go with something else. Is this a detective instincts thing? Pretty much. I pull into the right lane and pass two cars. With the black car in view, I flick the flashes. Congratulations on the arrest. Thanks. I pass off the perp from the passenger seat to the officer who arrived as backup. Don't forget to give the driver a pee test. Yes, sir. I'll get right on it. I can't believe that guy was a regular drug offender. His eyes were wild. He knew we were just traffic cops, but he couldn't hide his instinctive reaction. Nice catch. I guess even you get stuff right sometimes. It's not something I brag about. Weird. I thought you were going to be bragging pretty hard. The guy wasn't a killer, and he wasn't a terrorist. He was a run-of-the-mill druggie. It's not a about the size of the cases you close. It's the kind of thing nobody keeps thinking for long. Size matters. There are cases that matter, and ones that don't. 
But if that had been a big case, that might have even been a transfer to another division in the cards for me. Paduka? Let's go. Yeah, okay. It's hard to crack big cases from the traffic division. That's why I was looking for the smallest indication. And I'm gonna have to keep that up to get any results. Guess I'm doomed to stay down in the dumps for a while. I'm beat. At least you earned it today. A whole week of this is already messing with my head. Don't you know how you can keep doing a job? Don't, don't know how you can keep doing a job this boring. I don't expect a lot of stimulation from my work. It's just a job, so I do it. After I clock out, that's when I try to have fun. An attitude like that would definitely help. You're back. For some reason, Ikuta's waiting to greet us. Kamachi snaps a hasty salute and steps back. I need to borrow him. Please, by all means, feel free to keep him if you want. She escapes into the building. I'd love to follow, but I can't right now. I hear you made a noteworthy arrest. A regular drug offender or some such. It doesn't sound like praise to me. More like a goddamn implication. You happy now? I'm in traffic like you wanted. I'm enjoying it more than I expected. You could have let slip the ghost of a smile. Blackguard. I try to, <laughs> to go at him, but Fiyumi intercedes. Still on Ikuta side, I may owe you some debt, but that's a separate matter. The matter that is at hand did not arise from Superintendent Ikuta's office. Betty gave it a push, though. If you're curious, then come with me. Not my idea of a fun time. I'm dealing with a lot of pent-up rage right now. Watch it or you'll find out with your face. By all means, if you have the guts. That's a ballsy answer for a guy with no powers. Come with me. You can refuse if you like. Spend another week in the traffic division if you prefer. Yep. If that seems too short, we can arrange it for it to be another month. Don't think I'm that easy to break, ass face. Alright. We're going then. Understood. So, uh, what do you want to talk about? I had to bow my head to Ikuta to get him to talk. Anything to avoid one more minute in the traffic division. I've always considered the 13th a necessary evil. Dismantling it and forcing its components into other divisions is simple stupidity. So you wouldn't order it, is your point? Correct. Reallocating a human resource like you is hardly going to improve anyone's efficiency. Accurate, but I don't like to hear it from him. So who is stupid enough to pull a stunt like this? If it wasn't Ikuta, then that's the critical question. Who knows? That's not the answer I wanted to hear. I looked into it, but my efforts were shut down. You couldn't find out? Were you even trying? Of course! And he still got stymied. Whoever did this has significant sway. So the brass was too dumb to see the need for the 13th. They're not exactly famous for listening to the little people. That's one possibility. From my perspective, it's the easiest outcome. A little persuasion could set things straight. Ikuta's expression hardens. However, that they put a stop to my inquiries makes me suspicious. Me too. If they thought it was smart, then why not own up to it? So what options does that leave? It suggests that whoever did this knew it would cause difficulties. And if they did it anyway, then what are they after? Who knows? That's unclear too. I guess coming over here was a waste of time. Guess I groveled for nothing too. Does anyone else remember any groveling? I bowed my head when I asked you to talk after all. I need to glare up at me more menacingly. Not what I'd call groveling. I snuff out my cigarette, still half puffed. The second half wouldn't taste good anymore. See ya. I turn to leave the smoking room. I've only been able to learn one thing. I stop and turn back to face him. I see Ikuta pulling out a paper. This has something to do with you. Who, me? I guess it's not a surprise, but... I look over Ikuta's document. There's a list of reassignments for the 13th scattered members. For the others, there are several options presented. For me, there's only one and it's traffic. And strict orders not to put me anywhere else. Probably not because I'm such a perfect fit. You wouldn't fit in anyway. It's probably not somebody who just hates me either. Either it was advantageous to have you on traffic or placing you elsewhere would have been disadvantageous. Whichever it was, it was not a coincidence. And whoever it was, they had a strong understanding of affairs on the ground. So probably not some schmuck sitting in an office pushing papers around and making the grunts do all the work. Unless that schmuck secretary worked overtime doing the research. That narrows it down, huh? Barely, but well, this would be much easier. You could start with people who don't like me. That would be the great majority of the force. It would actually widen our scope. The opposite would have been far more helpful. True, I can count people here, here who like me on one hand. Hey, buzz off! You almost had me there. The brass told you to stop digging, right? 
They suggested repercussions to my career. That's a serious hardcore wall for him to hit. I hate Ikuda with a deadly passion, but losing him as the heart of the first would be a major. The agency would probably go into turmoil. And whoever we're dealing with, they don't seem stupid enough to not know that. But they did it anyway, to tear apart the 13th. Sounds to me like he's still digging. I am. What? You like me after all? I hate you with a deadly passion. Damn, I only thought that. He actually said it. I want to demonstrate that this idea has opposition. Dismantling the 13th is an unwise measure. Should a second or third of you arise, we'll need a discreet sideline to sweep them away too. I'm glad he's on my side, but I don't love his motives. So what's the plan? You gonna leave me idling in the traffic division? Our opponent won't be flushed out so easily, but we can't afford the luxury of patience. After a few months or years in this condition, there will be nothing left of the 13th to rebuild. That means we'll need to force their hand. Ikuta takes one last drag, then looks at me in the eye. Luka Hiryu, I'm removing you from traffic. The reasons given will be your clear unsuitability and your irresponsible behaviour. Hey! I'm not a fan of the traffic division, but it's not like I was drag dragging them down. You hear I got some draggy today? Don't worry, nobody's gonna believe that. That doesn't make me worry less. In any case, I rewrote today's report to give the credit to Officer Shinomiya. Screw you. I'm also ordering your assignment to the 1st Division. Hold up, the 1st? You aren't happy? Look at it the wrong way, and that's a promotion. Never fear. You ought to be phrased as disciplinary action. Huh? If you're going to be supervised, I want it to be where I can see you. We'll let you languish unused in the 1st. Languish, huh? Beats traffic, anyhow. Rest assured, you won't be on any investigations in the near future. You're going to languish for a while, and rot. I hope you enjoy running errands. Errands and paperwork, huh? My two favourite things. Not. Well, I'm not going to argue. Produce first quality work in the tasks you're given. Then we'll see. It's that or live in disgrace forever, apparently. Ikut is going to get the wrong kind of attention from above while he's at it for moving me against their wishes. He'll have clear, clever excuses, but he'll still catch, still catch flack. But he'll see where the heat comes from and find out what we're up against. Alone in the smoking room, I take a long drag. I've escaped the hell of traffic after just one week. Starting tomorrow, I'll be facing the first. That's a whole nother flavour of annoyance. As far as fit goes, the 13th was perfect for me. And I'm worried about what the higher-ups are thinking. Why chase me out of my nice, snug division? They got something in mind, but I can't see the shape of it. The 13th's office is empty, bereft of its members, most of the equipment has been left alone. The division's a loss, but at least I get a run of the place. I can smoke in here too, now, with no one to complain. Scarfing up the food, Mel spared me, I lay myself to rest. Detective Hideo. What? At an unspeakable hour of the night, an officer I recognise pokes his face in. His gaze darts around the room uncertainly before he comes to approach me, and whispers in my ear. You're wanted in the meeting room. I'm told it's to be kept quiet. And you had to come all the way here to tell me that? Kind of a pointless waste of effort. But at this hour, what's the angle? Who's calling? Superintendent Ikuta, I believe. You believe? It came via my superior. Anyway, you've been informed. Yeah. My first instinct is to ignore it, but it's not his usual style. Maybe I can squeeze a drink out of him on the way. I suppress the urge for a smoke and go where directed. Here I am. I enter the meeting room, but you call me out and don't even show? Ikuta's not here yet, nor is anyone else. Man, that guy's a mess. No point pulling out now though, so I wait. Soon a notification reaches my phone. Short form. Come to this location, don't tell anyone. The hell? Sender unknown? But it's gotta be Ikuta given the timing. The location is a narrow street not far from here. First the meeting room, now some alley? He's really giving me the runaround. Why shouldn't I tell anybody? At least it beats waiting around. I head outside and to the place in the text. Should be around here. But I don't sense anybody nearby. If this is a prank, it's overkill. I get a bad feeling. Maybe I should go back. Or... 
woman enters the alley to cut off the train of that train of thought. I don't know her face though. Is she just passing by? At this hour? In this place? Alone? I don't think so. An unexpected guest, I think, but then... Your detective, who do you? Who are you? Do I need to tell you? Well, maybe not. Since I haven't introduced myself. And she knows who I am. I'm sizing her up, but oh my god, when she moves. Slowly she extends a hand into her suit. I wouldn't do that. My guard goes higher and my gun comes out faster than hers does. You're a cold man. I don't go easy on anyone, not even pretty women. Most of the softies I've met are dead. That might be a lesson you'd do well to remember. That said, what do you think you're doing? Huh? Could you put that awful thing away? The woman pulls a business card from her inner pocket. I guess she wasn't going for a gun after all. I still don't drop my guard. Could be you're a keeper who uses business cards. You're very cautious. Has that helped you survive? Maybe. Shoot me if you deem me to be a threat then. You're experienced at making such judgments, I take it. She's sharp. She approaches exuding an appropriate aura of tension. She passes me the business card with slow movements. I got my powers on tap ready to go, but it doesn't look like I'll be needing them. I read what's on the card. Yero Daimonji. Rank Commissioner? Commissioner? That would put her even higher than Ikuta. She's one of the crowd who's usually lounging behind those judgy monitors. Most of them are middle-aged, if not outright old. She's young to be in their ranks. I put her somewhere in her late twenties. You've sure been climbing fast. That's my first impression. I hate to admit it, but Ikuta's promotion track is already abnormal. Only a few superintendents in the past reached his rank while still in their twenties. But this Daimonji has already risen higher. And while it's not the nicest thing to say, she's a woman. Society likes to say that sex is a equal, but NPA culture gives men a distinct advantage. There's also a question of aptitude for the role. We're better physically at restraining perps, and they're posturing like the brass do. I seem to recall it stirring up a talk at the time. You never heard. Daimonji cuts off my line of thinking again. I'm not so up to date on the in-house gossip. But if you're that much of a big shot, it must have been easy to get Ikuta's name dropped. Yes, I was the one who dispatched a messenger to the 13th division. You're high enough to be more direct too, you didn't need to mention it. Not even I've got the balls to ignore a commissioner's orders. Ordinarily you'd be correct, but I had a reason to call you out as Superintendent Ikuta. What kind of reason? I guess that's not the real question. I can think of a few. Because I doubt the guy who wrote me into this knew that he was doing it for either. What he was doing for either. So why'd you go to all this effort? She's still a commissioner, she could have just asked. And I really doubt she doesn't know it. The direct approach is not an option. It has to do with what I'm here to talk about. Top secret stuff. You must like the ring of that. I've heard worse. Would you kindly peruse this? I'm investigating the cult case. The cult. That sort of talk is catnip to me. Daimonji holds out a small notebook. I flip through but it's blank. In fact, it looks brand new. Doesn't look like anyone's written on this. I scan it again, still getting nothing. So what am I looking at? It appears to be empty at a glance, but look closer. I flip it over and stare at it. I still can't read her angle. I don't get it. I look up, I'm, co I'm comprehending, and something slams me in the chest. Then I hear a gunshot. A second bullet lands, and a third. I raise a hand, but Diamante has already stepped back out of reach. I see my status as commissioner didn't cause you to drop your guard. I hand you that notebook. I oh, did cause you. I hand you that notebook to distract your attention, but you stayed wary even as you concentrated. I commend your level of threat awareness. You with the cult? I kept up a mail of ice as, as a precaution. If it went for that, I'd probably be dead. But it stopped the bullets from breaking more of my than my outermost layer of skin. No, in fact, I am a genuine policewoman. She points a gun barrel at me as she talks. I did lie to you about my objective though. You were easier to trust before you started shooting me. I don't need you to believe me at this stage. What you believe about is about to stop mattering. You had the jump on me and I'm still at my feet. You think you could take me out now? I would have preferred to take you unawares. But neutralizing you won't be a problem regardless. Pillars of flame rise up around the woman. She's a keeper. Cripes, you're by the look of it a keeper with fire powers. Nothing especially unusual. Flame based abilities are common in this country. Or so she says, but her incendiary spires are burning more intensely than any power I've ever seen. Even from my distance, I can feel the heat. Please contrive not to die. The 
flames engulf my body. Breath. I form a wall of ice. Against my normal enemy, it would be protection of plenty. My powers have naturally good and bad matchups. My defenses melt down at the temperature differential, weakening them substantially. This narrow alleyway makes things even worse. Cripes! I want to get out in the open, but Daimonchi has more pillars behind me to forestall that. You have nowhere to run. Except cords. Yeah, no, not doing that. That would not be wise. My flames can never be extinguished unless they target perishes, or I let them fade. In other words, to touch them would mean your defeat. I can't guess how true that is, but to assume it's a lie would be risky. Are you gonna kill me? I'm with the police. I want to feel her out. If she's on the side of good, she won't actually do it. That'll give me the leeway to try something bold. Sadly, it seems necessary. That's pretty wild. I'm a hard-working cop, what's your problem? Not sure what I did to get myself assassinated. You pried into the cult case too deeply. I've warned you repeatedly through Superintendent Ikuta, but you never cease your investigations. This situation is wholly of your own making. Well, that sucks. It's harder to argue with people when they're right. That she's really MPA, though, is beyond doubt now. She knows our internal politics too well. You have two choices. Come quietly into custody, or resist and die. Take your pick. Daimonji has a pair of handcuffs in hand. The kind that would seal my powers. I glanced down for an instant, checking on three bullets she popped at me. She wasn't shooting to kill, they were meant to incapacitate my powers, to seal away my ice and bring me in quietly. I'll resist and survive. I thought you might try that. In that case, death it is. Your fire flares up again. Still standing, still, standing still. I'd be mere seconds from roasting. I drive my power to my feet and make myself frosty footholds. If forwards and backwards aren't an option, then the only way leaves is up. Ice assisted, I kick my way up the wall. Oh, the flames followed me from behind. I spread the ice wider to keep them away. It won't be lasting long, but I only need seconds. Then I'm on the roof. The flame pillars disappeared. Damn, those things are no joke. I almost got crispy. Getting away is a big relief, but with the commissioner after me, I can't expect it to last. I gotta be safe in the building, though. She's trying to do this on the down low. Have you already given up on escape? Huh? The voice comes from a direction where it should be. I turn, and there's Io Daimonji. You're kidding me. Daimonji risen on a jet of flames floating easily. Powers can possess myriad applications. You're not the only one who ever gets creative. Guess not. Our extraordinary powers are polar opposites, but equal. Looks like we're dead even on application too. That leaves their basic interaction, which leaves me in trouble. I'm not here to play hide and seek. Wasting time isn't one of my hobbies. With that, the fires pour into me. I hurl out a barrier of ice. The flames melt it without remorse. In a panic, I throw myself aside, leaving behind a heavily burned patch of roof. With the gun she's still holding, the woman pumps lead at me. My frozen wall can absorb those shots, but a crack begins to form in it. Give me a break, damn it! Resisting will do nothing but extend your pain. Ready to surrender? <laughs> don't make me laugh. As expected, I'm ready to fight you then. Cripes! Your life is at risk, would you like to counterattack? You make it sound so easy. She's still a goddamn commissioner. Trying to get her back would make this even worse. Not just in terms of defending myself. If that's what she's waiting for, I don't want to know what happens when she get what, gets what she wants. Despite the present danger, you calculate risk well. You'll be, a, you'll be a terrible loss. If she means a word of it, it's not easing her assault at all. These regular rounds can't readily penetrate your defences, regardless of my use of anti-keeper munitions. In that case, Daimonji replaces your ma empty magazine with a new one. What's in it won't matter as long as it can't hit me. So I'm buying time. Because she definitely doesn't want to drag this out. She points the gun at me again and pulls the trigger just one time. So I... Huh? The shot punches straight through my shield. Somewhere near my shoulder, the bullet hits home. What? As the pain hits me, I see all my protection dissolve. The woman's flames vanish almost simultaneously. Looks like she thinks she's won. You let your power take all my bullets through the fight. That's what led to your loss. What? How'd that bullet get through my... That was what you might call the leading edge of our anti-keeper arsenal. 
A legendary silver bullet passes her extraordinary ability-based defenses as if they simply weren't there. I've never heard of that before. Whoever named it must have had balls at least. It was developed in the utmost secrecy, but I think you'll find it lives up to its name. <laughs> Why blow top secret tech like that on a sideline detective with no hope of promotion? A guy could blackmail his bosses with info like this. Rest assured we plan to make its existence public soon anyway. It hurts where I got shot. Not any worse than a normal bullet at least. But there's something wrong. And I got a bad feeling about what it is. What if it doesn't just ignore my powers? The most spectac spectacular effects of this bullet begin after it enters the recipient's body. You better not be saying, yes you seem to have noticed the change in your body. Your powers have become completely deactivated. Damn you. It passes right through power based defenses and then it takes away powers when it hits? R&D really outdid themselves this time. I glare up at Daimonji, but her face doesn't change. Maybe you're why the agency doesn't promote more women. You've been through hell to get here though, haven't you? Thinking back on how she fought, I can see it. Everything she did was to make sure this one shot would land. It wasn't what you would call- I wasn't what you would call an elite. I fought my way here from the bottom. A keeper's effectiveness is heavily affected by the nature of that keeper's innate abilities. But even the best power can easily go to waste in the hands of an incompetent wielder. I've been a detective for a long time, and if I ever thought my power was the best around, I got disabused of that idea pretty damn fast. Over the years of fighting, I've seen plenty of people with powers stronger than mine. The only reason I'm still alive is that I've beaten them in other ways. Some of them didn't know how to use what they had, but were too stupid to do anything to begin with. Sometimes I just got lucky. There's nobody I'd like to le fight less than someone with good powers who uses them right. Someone like the woman in front of me now. Her firepowers aren't anything unusual. Hell, every whips in the world had those. At least a little bit, if not more. It's only in the hands of a truly masterful wielder that those everyday powers become something else. In the old days, they say dragons had the run of the world, and the dragons who used fire were the strongest of all. A fragment of the primal, most powerful force. There are powers like no-names that you can read as super strong, but in the wrong situations they fold like paper. If he turned on his power after a meeting with after meeting Daimonji, his chances of survival would be basically zero. He could burn through a few possibilities, or a few dozen. At the end of them all, he'd end up a burnt corpse. His one winning tactic is never to meet her. I still see a willingness to fight in your eyes. Shall we continue? What happens to me if I say yes? Will you kill me? I'll simply continue to put you in your place. What will it be? You want to use your powers on somebody without any? One of your own colleagues? You're like an adult going all out on a ball game with a child. I got no way to attack left and no defenses either. All I've got is my silver tongue. Turns out running to the rooftops was a real bad idea. The only place I got left to run is over the edge here, down to an early death. You got many a humble non-keeper human the same way, haven't you? Ha! <laughs> I laugh and bend forward. The idea is to get myself in melee range. A full body tackle. It's a desperate plan, but... When I take the first step towards her, a roar of co a roaring column of fire blazes up in front of me. One more step and I'm roast head you. A second pillar bursts up and a third surrounding me. You do make it difficult to have a conversation. That's too warm. The temperature around me just keeps rising, sending sweat flooding from every pore. It's inconvenient, but perhaps this will provide the necessary context. The torture you mean? Perhaps it is. You chose this path yourself. Surrender and submit yourself to my custody. You gonna tell me who you are first? Are you really with the MPA? Of course. The business card I gave you was genuine. Genuine, huh? I hurl away the business card with the title Commissioner. The flames eat it up, leaving only ashes. So what's a bigwig like you doing roughing up an officer and then taking him into custody? I know that you've been pursuing the cult massacre case independently. No clue what you're talking about. Apparently you don't intend to admit it. Admit what? I'm totally lost. Are you? Then it seems I'll need you to be unconscious for a while. How exactly are you planning on making that happen? Your power's nasty, that's for sure. You could incinerate me on the spot if you wanted. But the fine-tuned control has got to be risky, eh? Not particularly. My vision fills with red. The flames enwreath my every inch of my body. They block even my dim view of Daimonji. And then, my consciousness melts away. And with that, we're going to wrap this episode up here. Because I did let it run on a little bit long. That was interesting. Man, the, the, the special effects and stuff they put in this game are pretty fucking spectacular. Especially for a visual novel. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking it out to me and I'll see you in the next one.